20-year-old Chinese girl forced to marry a 60-year-old American man, but also pay $10,000. Because this marriage is a business deal, Xiao Yu looks at the old man's hand on her shoulder and is too nervous to move. Her boyfriend, Wei, is very upset, as if he is the victim. In fact, Wei had forgotten that he was the one who made the marriage happen. The night was full of lights and gasps of breath that filled the room. Wei vented his frustration on his girlfriend with anger. His goal is to make Xiao Yu remember, you are mine. Xiao Yu is an orphan who grew up in Wei's mother's orphanage. The two of them were childhood sweethearts. When Wei came to the U.S. to say, his mother sent Xiao Yu over and made her Wei's girlfriend in name. In fact, Xiao Yu was Wei's free nanny. So without a green card, Xiao Yu became an illegal immigrant and had to work secretly in a noisy garment factory. When integration came to check on her, she had to hide like a rat. One of the best places for her to hide is the outer wall of the rooftop. New York is a place where money is the only thing that matters, and it's hard for Chinese people to make a name for themselves here. All the way came here to study, she still has to work at the seafood market after class every day. In order to let Xiao Yu stay in America, he consulted the local fake marriage, need to pay $25,000. But Wei and Xiao Yu have been saving for a few years to get $10,000. They were nowhere near their goal. That's when Wei was introduced to Mario. Mario was a writer when he was young. He spent a few years in prison for his involvement in the Vietnam War. After his release, he spent his days gambling for fun. A losing game left him over $9,000 in debt to the casino. If he couldn't pay it back soon, he had to pay with his life. So he and Wei made a deal. Mario helps them get his green card. They help Mario pay off his debt. Mario also asked Wei Xiao Yu if she knew about this and if she agreed. Wei replied, She has no choice, okay? Mario laughed. If Xiao Yu didn't have a choice, then who did? Mario and Xiao Yu both went back to their separate tracks after getting their marriage license. But immigration was already familiar with the routine. So they often made unannounced visits to Mario's house. Mario was terrified. If immigration found out that the marriage was a sham, Xiao Yu would be deported back to China. Mario would also go to jail. So Xiao Yu had no choice but to move in with Mario. She pays $120 per month in rent. To save money, Xiao Yu walked to and from work for months at a time. Wei, on the other hand, continued to live a life of luxury. He always ate delicious food and went to nightclubs. But when he talked to Xiao Yu on the phone, he always complained about the hardships of life. He was too tired this day, too busy that day. Xiao Yu felt sorry for Wei, so she decided to buy him a hairy crab to tonic his body. This is a hairy crab. The girl skillfully kept the crab legs for herself, but put the fatty crab body and crab yolk into her boyfriend's bowl. In her opinion, there is nothing wrong with this. She couldn't let Wei suffer. So she preferred to suffer herself. She married a 60-year-old man in exchange for a peaceful life in America. Although Xiao Yu never complained away, but she actually had a lot of discomfort too. She worked the night shift, but Mario would lock the door at 10. The hallway light was still broken, so she had to come home every day in fear. The clock in the living room had stopped long ago, which made her late. The room was in such a mess that she couldn't find a place to stay in it. Sharing a room with a strange man made Xiao Yu feel scared. She was always saying sorry. She says she's sorry when Mario opens the door for her when she's late for work. When the lock of the bathroom door is broken and she can't get out of it, she also says sorry. This was completely incomprehensible to Mario. He is a pessimistic person. In his opinion, there are two kinds of people in the world. One is a living person who is unhappy like Wei. He was obviously not happy in America. But because everyone says America is good, he would give anything to stay here. They live only to prove to the world that I am successful, not that I am happy. The other kind of people are the dead who are happy like him. They spend their lives in pursuit of happiness and freedom and end up with nothing and live in poverty. In fact, Mario is a married man in a way, although he and his ex-wife Rita are divorced. But the two of them still keep communicating with each other physically. For them, the divorce was just a way to stop being bound by marriage and to enjoy love more freely. But the day after they had sex, Rita would leave. By the time she had time to visit Mario again, sometimes it was months, sometimes years. Mario's world was very lonely. It was Xiao Yu's presence that gave him a sense of freshness he hadn't felt in a long time. He looked at Xiao Yu's toothpaste. He touched her towel. He even smelled her pajamas. Then he laughed at himself for being a pervert. In fact, he was not a pervert but just curious. The sin of life emanating from the young flesh seemed to awaken his dead heart. But he had a sense of proportion. That day, Xiao 
You went to clean up his cluttered living room. Out of the kindness of her, Mario came back and saw the new room. And he went crazy, because he was used to being alone and unkempt. The sudden kittiness and care made him feel confused. He was embarrassed when Rita came back. Rita had been able to leave whenever she wanted because she was sure that no matter how far or how long she was gone, Mario would be there waiting for her. But this time was different. There was a beautiful young girl in his house. This made Rita feel a sense of crisis like never before. She scolded to kick CLU out. CLU didn't dare to resist and went back to Wei's house with her luggage. Now it's Wei's turn to say no. He rushed to Mario's house and argued with Rhea. At that moment, the immigration officers made a surprise visit. Mario had to lie that Rita was his cousin. Wei is CLU's brother. That's how he managed to fool the immigration officers to avoid unnecessary misunderstanding. CLU did not choose to go home immediately after work. She wandered aimlessly through the streets of New York until late at night. But Rita is still convinced that Mario and CLU have a secret. The girl was taking a shower when she suddenly felt someone was staring at her from behind. She saw an eye through the people and was so frightened that she screamed. It turns out that the person peeping at her is her husband's ex-wife. Rita was so arrogant because she knew her ex-husband and see how you were married under false pretenses. But now she also has a sense of crisis because Mario has started to favor CLU in his life. He stopped locking the door when CLU came home late. CLU is afraid of the dark, so he turns on the hallway light in advance. When CLU needed to check the time at work, he repaired the old clock that had been broken for more than 10 years. He even started to write again under CLU's influence. Not only Rita, but also Wei noticed the change in the relationship between the two of them. He looked at the dinner Mario had prepared for CLU on the table and was so jealous that he lost his appetite for dinner. After coming out, Wei began to question CLU. He worries that CLU no longer belongs to him alone. But all this is not because he loves CLU, but because he is worried that his dignity as a man will be damaged. At night, he and his friend went to a bar to drink away their sorrows. He asked his friend if CLU would change if she got her green card. In fact, he already had an answer inside, but it wasn't CLU who had changed. It was him. He became more and more indulgent and even stayed up all night with a bar girl that day. At that time, CLU, who felt guilty, came to Wei's place alone. She slept on the table all night because she was worried about Wei. Afterwards, CLU did not blame Wei for sleeping with another woman, but Wei began to complain about CLU's indiscretion. You think it's honorable to marry an old man in his 60s? That night, CLU spent the night at Wei's house. That's when the barmaid handed Wei her new address. CLU didn't ask what their relationship was, because she thinks the most important thing in love is trust, and she trusts Wei a lot. The next day, Mario brought CLU good news. The interview with the immigration office was scheduled for the following Monday. If CLU passed the interview, she would get her green card in order to better prepare for the test. The two of them started to get to know each other as soon as possible. From personal hobbies to lifestyle habits, even their catchphrases. The well, how do you say a swear word, a bad word, when you're mad at somebody in Chinese? Um, come on us. The old man and the girl talked late into the night. Finally, Mario asked her, do you think I, an old man, am worthy of your $9,000? CLU said sorry again out of the habit of disturbing him. Mario pointed at her nose with a deep sense of humor. I'm not sorry. That's right. You're not sorry. On the other hand, Rita and Wei were sitting at home with a lot of anger. Mario and CLU's late return seemed to give them something to blame. Rita angrily offered to leave with her luggage. Wei pushed and shouted at CLU and then punched Mario in the abdomen. Mario's health was already bad. His condition started to get worse after the punch. That night, CLU went back to Wei's rented house and tried to explain the matter to him. But Wei didn't come home all night again. Now CLU finally realized that Wei had betrayed her. Now she didn't know what was the point of staying and thus with her green card. Mario told her, we will go wherever you decide to go. If you decide not to go, we won't go. I respect your decision, not ways. It's time you learn it to respect yourself more. It's your life. In the end, CLU chose to take the green card. In the evening, Wei found CLU and said he would find a new job. He wanted to start over with CLU. But before he went to bed, he kept talking about his complaints as if CLU had done something wrong. And he was the only victim of the deal. The next day, CLU went to Mario's house to pack his bags, but found Mario in a very bad state. His whole body was stiff and immobile, but he refused to go to the hospital. He didn't want to stay alone in the hospital. He just wanted to lie at home quietly. Although he said he was fine, it was clear that his time was running out. 
That's when Wei called. Cao Yu helplessly asked for his permission to stay and take care of Mario for two last days. Wei sternly scolded, I only wait for you five minutes. After five minutes you do not come down I will leave. Then he hung up the phone with apathy. By the time Cao Yu returned to the bedroom, Mario had lost his breath. A fly sensed the smell of death and crawled over his corpse. Wei downstairs kept honking the horn and urging. The ear piercing sound made Cao Yu feel disgusted. At that moment Wei came upstairs across the door. Cao Yu and Wei both chose to stop. In the end, Cao Yu stayed by Mario's side and accompanied him through the last days of his life. Cao Yu closed the curtains and disappeared into the darkness. But it's okay. The darkness is connected to the light. The phoenix is nirvana. The fire is reborn. Cao Yu's life is still long. Her story has just begun. No matter how much you've given in the past, it's all over now. We have to learn to grow up on our own.